osteology of the orbit. The orbit is a skeletal structure nestled within the skull. It serves as a protective sanctuary for the eye and associated tissues. Comprising seven bones, this cavity exhibits a complex arrangement. Within the orbit, the bones showcase a network of foramina and fissures, serving as gateways for vital neurovascular structures on their journey from the brain to the eye and face, and vice versa. The optic nerve, cranial nerve 2, a conduit of visual information, finds its passage through these pathways. Let's learn about its anatomy. Imagine the orbit as a quadrangular pyramidal cavern situated in the upper region of the face. It emerges from the collaboration of four facial bones, the maxilla, zygomatic bone, lacrimal bone and palatine bone, along with three cranial bones, the frontal bone, ethmoid bone and sphenoid bone. This convergence creates an anatomical marvel that deserves admiration. The base of this pyramidal structure opens towards the front, facing the face itself. On the other hand, the apex projects inward, pointed posterior medially towards the centre of the skull. The boundaries enclosing this pyramid are constituted by the medial wall, lateral wall, roof and floor. Lining the inner surfaces of these walls is a connective tissue called periorbita, which adds an extra layer of protection. First, let's talk about the apex. The most important feature here is the optic foramen that is bound medially by the body of the sphenoid bone and laterally by the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. This structure lies adjacent to the superior orbital fissure. Within its confines, the optic foramen plays host to the second cranial nerve, the optic nerve, along with the ophthalmic artery, offering them a path to venture beyond the confines of the skull. The next boundary opposite the apex is the base. It is also known as the orbital margin or orbital rim and is a sturdy framework that protects its precious contents. It also serves as the site for the attachment of the orbital septum. The orbital margin has four borders namely the supraorbital margin by the frontal bone, the medial margin by the frontal process of the maxilla, the infraorbital margin by the zygomatic process of the maxilla and the zygomatic bone, and the lateral margin by the zygomatic process of the frontal bone and the zygomatic bone. Moving on to the roof of the orbit, you'll find the orbital part of the frontal bone forming the majority of the roof. The posterior portion accommodates the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. The roof features the lacrimal fossa, which cradles the orbital part of the lacrimal gland. The medial wall of the orbit is a composite of four bones, the maxilla, lacrimal bone, ethmoid bone and sphenoid bone. A helpful mnemonic, my little eye sits in the orbit, helps in remembering these bones. The orbital plate of the ethmoid bone dominates the medial wall and houses ethmoidal cells. The lacrimal bone and the frontal process of the maxilla collaborate to form the lacrimal groove, cradling the lacrimal sac. Several landmarks draw attention to the medial wall. First, we have the anterior and posterior ethmoidal foramina. The anterior ethmoidal foramen serves as a gateway for the anterior ethmoidal vein, artery and nerve, while the posterior ethmoidal foramen grants passage to the posterior ethmoidal vein, artery and nerve. Next, we have the trochlea a cartilaginous structure providing a pathway for the tendon of the superior oblique muscle. Let's shift our focus to the floor. It is also called the inferior wall and is formed by three bones, the maxilla, zygomatic bone and palatine bone. It separates the orbit from the maxillary sinus. A notable landmark in the floor of the orbit 
is the inferior orbital fissure. Moving to the lateral wall. It consists of the zygomatic bone anteriorly and the greater wing of the sphenoid bone posteriorly. This wall separates the orbit from the temporal fossae. A prominent feature of this lateral wall is the superior orbital fissure, nestled between the greater and lesser wings of the sphenoid bone. Pop quiz Now let's discuss the details of the two important fissures in the orbit, the superior and inferior orbital fissures. The superior orbital fissure is on the lateral wall of the orbit and provides a passage to the superior ophthalmic vein, a branch of the inferior ophthalmic vein. Superior and inferior branches of the third cranial nerve or oculomotor nerve. The lacrimal, frontal, and nasociliary branches of the ophthalmic division of the fifth cranial nerve or the trigeminal nerve, the fourth cranial nerve or the trochlear nerve, and the sixth cranial nerve or the abducens nerve. Moving on now to the inferior orbital fissure present on the floor of the orbit. Through this fissure we find the inferior ophthalmic veins, infraorbital artery, zygomatic and infraorbital branches of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve and the orbital branches of the pterygopalatine ganglion. Continuing our exploration, we encounter the captivating contents of the orbit. The majority of the space within the orbital cavity is occupied by the eyeballs themselves, accompanied by the orbital fascia. These components work together, providing stability to the eye and supporting the movements facilitated by the extraocular muscles. These are six in number, namely the superior, inferior, medial and lateral rectus muscles, as well as the superior and inferior oblique muscles. All details about these muscles will be discussed in our session called the extraocular muscles. Pop quiz. The orbit is the center of many clinical conditions. Let's understand some of them. Fractures are a common clinical occurrence that can affect any of the walls of the orbit. However, it is the floor and medial wall that are most frequently impacted. The term used for these fractures is blowout fracture. The fragility of the thin ethmoidal cells makes the medial wall susceptible to fractures. In these fractures, continuity is disrupted, leading to the creation of a craniosinus fistula which is a direct communication between the ethmoid paranasal sinuses and the orbit. CSF can leak through these communications, causing a drop in the intracranial pressure, which causes headaches, nausea and vomiting, and neurological symptoms. Sometimes the bone fragments can injure the eye, leading to blindness. Now let's talk about the fractures of the floor. In cases, the fracture line often involves the inferior rectus muscle, resulting in upward gaze diplopia. This condition leaves the affected eye unable to move upwards, causing double vision when attempting to gaze upwards. The next commonly seen condition involving the orbit is inflammations or infections 
and cancers. Because the orbit communicates with the cranial fossa, the infections can infiltrate into the cranium, leading to meningitis. Neoplastic processes can give birth to metastatic masses within the brain tissue. The orbit's connections to the cranium can be a major cause for grave consequences. Time for a neat mania session. Which of the following conditions is associated with a fracture of the orbital floor involving the lateral rectus muscle? A. Downward gaze diplopia. B. Inflammation of the meninges. C. Leakage of cerebrospinal fluid. D. Inability to move the eyeball upwards. Correct answer D. Inability to move the eyeball upwards. Explanation A fracture of the orbital floor can result in the inferior rectus muscle being dragged into the fracture line, causing an inability to move the eyeball upwards and double vision. This condition is known as upward gaze diplopia. And with that, we come to the end of this session on the osteology of the orbit. We hope you had fun learning with us.